Hello and welcome. The goal of this tutorial is to demonstrate the use of the Convey Unreal plugin and how to use its blueprints for open-ended conversation with MPC characters. For the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to use MetaHuman assets, but you can use your own assets or blueprints and you'll be able to achieve the same results. So first, let's set up our project. First, under the Edit menu, make sure that the Convey plugin is enabled. You will also need an API key. To get an API key, head over to convey.com, sign in, and then click the key icon to retrieve your API key. Once you have your API key, go to Edit, Project Settings, then scroll all the way down to the plugins where you'll see the Convey plugin. Then just paste your API key into the API key field. The next step is to enable voice recording in Unreal Engine. To do that, close the project and go to the Projects folder. Go into the config directory and open the file defaultengine.ini. You'll just need to add two lines to this file. As shown, enter voice and enabled equals true. This will allow Unreal Engine to work with a microphone. After saving the file, open the project again. Now we can add in the MetaHuman. Navigate to the window menu, Quixel Bridge, and then MetaHuman Presets. We'll just grab one of the MetaHumans that we already have downloaded. You should now see a MetaHumans folder and inside it, the MetaHuman that you downloaded. Now you can set up the AI conversation functionality. We'll begin by setting up the MetaHuman character for conversation. Go ahead and open up the MetaHuman blueprint, and then we are going to add a new component, the Convey Chatbot. For any character that you want to talk to, you'll need to add this Convey Chatbot component to the blueprint. Click on the Convey Chatbot component, and under the Details panel, find the Character ID field. Here you'll add the Character ID for this Chatbot component. To get the Character ID, head back to convey.com and go to your dashboard. Here you'll see all the characters that you have created. You can also create a new character at this point. For this demo, we'll use an existing character. Here is where you'll find the character's ID that you need to use in Unreal Engine. Before we head back, let me just explain this page. Here you can enter the character's name, choose a character voice, and enter the character's backstory. In the backstory, you can add information about the character's history and its personality. This information will affect how the character responds. Let's ask this character who he is. Hi there, I'm Elvis. I'm a traveler, musician, and dancer. I love exploring new places and performing for people. So let's go ahead and change this backstory. Instead of a traveler, let's make him a trader who trades in jewelry. Now, when we ask the question again, who are you? I'm Elvis, a trader. I specialize in jewelry, and I love to travel around, trading and buying pieces from all over the world. I'm always on the lookout for unique, one-of-a-kind pieces. So you can see how changing the backstory affects the character's response. So let's go back into Unreal Engine and paste in the character ID into the character ID field. Now let's compile and save, and that's it. The character is now set up for conversation. Now let's go and set up the player blueprint. Head back to the content browser into the core folder. Here we have a player controller and a player blueprint. Let's open up the player blueprint. This is a very simple pawn blueprint. Here we have a few controls for movement and some mouse controls. We'll need to add some AI related components. First, add the convey player component. A player pawn should always have the convey player component, and the chatbot character should always have the convey chatbot component. Now, let's add the spacebar key. We'll use the pressed event to start recording our speech, and the released event when we are finished speaking. Drag in the convey player component, and we'll run this start talking blueprint when the spacebar is pressed. Drag in another copy of the convey player plugin and this time we'll call the finish talking blueprint. Connect this up to the spacebar released event. The start talking blueprint has a few input parameters. To specify which chatbot you will be speaking to, you use the convey chatbot component input. To do this, we'll use the get actor of class function. For the actor class, we'll use the metahuman blueprint. We'll hook this up to the spacebar pressed event. From the MetaHuman class, we have a convey chatbot component. We'll hook this up to the return value and connect it to the convey chatbot component under the start talking blueprint. So to summarize, when the spacebar is pressed, we'll get the MetaHuman blueprint and return the convey chatbot component, which will be connected to the start talking component. 
We'll cover the environment parameter in a later tutorial. But for now, just note that the environment and generate actions inputs are related to the action API. The action API allows you to control characters actions, such as asking them to go to a table, retrieve an object, or something like that. We'll cover this in a later tutorial. We also have the voice response parameter. This allows us to hear a voice instead of just receiving text. So make sure to enable this if you want to hear voice output. The run on server parameter is used in multiplayer games. So if your application is a multiplayer game, make sure this is checked. Otherwise, leave it unchecked. To keep the latency as low as possible, it's important not to check this if you don't need the multiplayer option. The stream player mic parameter is also used for multiplayer games. Make sure this is checked for multiplayer games where you want players to hear each other. You can think of this as a simple implementation of voice chat. So now that we are done, let's save it and give it a quick test. Hello there, how are you? Hello there, I'm doing well, thank you. How can I help you today? Well, as you can see, basic conversation is now implemented. The next step will be to enable animations. But before we do that, I want to show you some other functionality that could come in handy. Let's look at how you can handle memory. Hey, can you memorize the number 120? Absolutely. I'm a trader, so I can easily memorize numbers. What is the number that I just asked you to memorize? The number is 120. Now, watch what happens if I actually close the game and then open it up again. Hey, did I ask you to remember any number? No, you didn't ask me to remember any number. Is there something specific you'd like me to remember? So, if we restart the game, the conversation is going to reset. So, if you don't want it to reset, or you want to retain previous conversations, you can do the following. I'm going back to the MetaHuman Blueprint. Here we can drag in the Convey Chatbot component, and there's a variable we can use called session ID. This is a string that keeps track of the conversation. To show you how this works, let's print out the session ID. Here we'll use a function to capture a key press. For this example, let's use B. So whenever we press B on the keyboard, we'll get the instance of the MetaHuman, and then we'll grab the convey chatbot and get the session ID. We'll hook this up to a print function. Let's compile and save and run it again. So right now, if I press B, you'll see that the session ID is negative one. Watch what happens when I start a conversation. Hey, can you memorize the number 200? Yes, I can memorize the number 200. Is there something else I can help you with? So notice when I press B again, the string for the session ID changes. You can use this to keep track of a conversation. Let's grab the session ID that we just printed out. So we'll go to the output log and we can copy it from there. By the way, if you can't find the output log, you can look under the window menu and you'll see it down the list. Going back to the log, we'll copy the session ID and go back to the MetaHuman blueprint. Here we'll use the event begin play. Drag in the convey chatbot and let's set this session ID to the one we just copied. Let's run this one more time. Hey, did I ask you to memorize a number? Yes, you asked me to memorize the number 200. Is there something else I can help you with? As you can see, this is a way you can have your character remember the last conversation. You can use another function called reset conversation. When this function is run, it will reset the session ID back to negative one. You could also just set the session ID to negative one manually, but the function may be more intuitive. One way you can use this is to keep track of the separate conversations for each character. Any time a player saves or exits a game, you can get the session ID and save it along with the game files. So whenever a player reloads a game, you can just load the corresponding session IDs. There are also some other functions that might come in handy. For example, we have getCharacterDetails. This function takes in a character ID and outputs the character name, voice, and backstory. It also outputs two parameters related to Ready Player Me characters, but we'll cover that in another tutorial.
There is also an update character function. With this, you can input the character ID and then update the voice, backstory, or character name. Note that if you only want to update one parameter, like the backstory, you can fill that in and just leave the other parameters empty. That way the function won't update these other parameters. And the same applies if you wanted to update, say, the voice, you fill in that parameter and leave the others empty. Make sure that these other parameters are completely empty and do not contain even a white space. One way you can use this is to update the character's information if something happens in the environment. For example, let's say the character bought a new house. You can just connect the append function to the backstory and add a space in a new line under B and under C put in the new information and then just hook that up to the new backstory on the update character function. Remember to hook the execution pin of the update character function to the on success pin from the get character details. So this is a way to update a character's backstory so that it will be aware of new events. Two other useful functions are the get all character IDs, which allows you to get all the IDs of any characters that you have created, and the create character function. This allows you to create new characters and outputs the new character ID on success. That's it for this part of the tutorial. Up next, we'll talk about adding transcriptions and some other important features. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.